Hey YouTubers, TJ here. Real quick one today. Sorry for my uh, filthy, messy bench here. So today I made a fixture that allows me to press out wrist pins out of press fit pistons. This is a big block Chevy I'm working on for a buddy of mine. He's doing a, a Chevelle project. So we just got an engine that was, you know, a marine motor or whatever it was, 4 volt main, 454, and we're going to redo it. But I want to take the rods off these pistons because we're not going to use these pistons. So what I did is in order to support the rod as you press it out, you have to have, it's got to be flat and you have to have shims in here to support this because as you press this down, you're going to put stress on this here. And if you incorrectly have, you know, if you don't have any shims, you're going to bend the rod or twist the rod. You got to remember this rod comes up a little bit here and you can't put your shims under here because it's, it's not flat. If you look at a lot of rods, you could see there's a little little indentation here, and then it, and then the indentation stops about here, and then it starts to rise up a little bit. Well, you can't put your shims here either, so you have to like cant them out a little bit, and make sure they're flat. And this allows you to even out the stress on the rod, and it won't twist the rod, won't bend the rod. So here's. This is all pressed off already. I just did it. it. Took me about I don't know 30 seconds to press it off, not even. Uh, it did took me a little bit longer to make this jig. Uh, probably got an hour and a half into it, maybe maybe a little less. But anyways, let me just take this apart and I'll show you my jig. How what I did. I see a lot of guys on YouTube using hammers to heat it up a little bit in here, and they put it in a press. And there's a hammer supporting it over here, you know, thinking that's gonna take up. And not bend the rod, but it will bend the rod if, if you're doing it wrong. Again, this is evening out the pressure on the rod here. Um, nothing moves here. Where the piston is resting on the underside here, there's little feet that hold this. So it's not on the skirt here. I've seen machine shops, you know, press pistons out. I know you're not going to reuse a piston, that's fine. But let's say you're going to reuse a piston. If you're going to reuse a piston, you can't just put the skirt on you know your press and and crank away or, or press away and you know you're gonna wreck your piston so here's here's my jig um, let me just take this apart here so here's the main character of the jig right here it's a 3 8 plate just some scrap I had laying around I don't know eight or nine inches long I believe uh, I took a piece of one inch by, you know, three maybe, two and a half by inch and a half. Didn't even really measure. I machined a big U out of it. And then I TIG welded it in two spots here and here on each side to minimize warping. Didn't go crazy on the heat. I don't want to warp anything. I want to keep it pretty flat. Um, and what that allows me to do is these pads here hold the piston. They hold it flat. You can see, it's hard to see with my hands in the way here. But this holds a piston flat on these on these pads on the other side here. Right here, the piston resides here. It's not hitting the, the skirt on the on your press. And then this piece here allows me to shim up the rod where I need to be so I can do other other manufacturer Ford. Uh, small block Chevy. I have a small block Chevy one here too. Uh, I haven't pressed it out, but you, but you could see on small block Chevys and some other ones, there's some casting marks here. However, uh, I think they had this in mind. This is pretty flat. So this will reside on my flat side here. Again, this is not shimmed for a small block Chevy. So, but this stays pretty, pretty flat here once you're in, in the groove. It doesn't rock, it doesn't move, and again, the piston is not hitting, the skirt's not hitting the base. So, this is my jig. Uh, please copy if you will. I want to give a shout out to uh, Reyes Engines. Uh, I believe he's out west in California. I'm in Connecticut. I saw his, his little um, process, how he presses pins off and on. Uh, pretty cool. I just took a little bit further and made a nice jig. Um, as I said, I just tried it. It works great. I also machined a mandrel. 
Uh, I think this is an old, old one inch bolt. It was probably like 15 inches long, so I have other, I can cut another piece off and make it for a small block Chevy. This fits in here like so. Whoops, like that. Um, and it locates everything. It's not really tight, um, but it will not fit a small block Chevy. I have to machine another one. Didn't take long, 15, 20 minutes maybe. Uh, this works great, no problems. Just put it in there, set it all up, and press away. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and please comment if you have any other ideas. Uh, hopefully in the future I have to press seven more rods off and I'm going to polish the, I already started polishing this side of it, the rod and getting the casting marks out and just trying to make the corners round so no stress marks here, no stress risers. Um, and then we're going to resize the rods. He's not going crazy. Um, these rods are probably good for a little 500 horse or so. Um, so he's going to put, you know, oval ports on it, not big square ports. He wants some torque. So, uh, in the future, there will be a build on the big block Chevy. So stay tuned. Thank you.